So are you looking for ways to improve the function in your kitchen for your kiddos or even for yourself? In today's video, I'm going to show you how we recently transformed our kids' cabinet and created a pull-out drawer system all on a budget. Hey, I'm Lindsay with Organized to Save. If we're just now meeting, welcome. On this channel, I'm here to help you be more productive and get organized all on a budget. Now, I don't know about your house, but in our house, kid stuff can add up really quickly in the kitchen. One of my goals in our house has really been to modify the house so that way my daughter can access everything that she needs to really easily and can be more independent getting around our house. One of the things that we've done in our kitchen in the past is to have a kid's cabinet. I did a video on this cabinet a long time ago, but it was time for a much needed refresh. And to be honest, the way that I had that cabinet organized, we were losing a lot of valuable space in the back where she could not access. So today I want to show you how we completely reorganized and transformed this cabinet to add in a pull out drawers on a super tight budget. Now, in order to transform this cabinet into pull-out drawers, we needed to pick up a couple tools. So the first thing we did was obviously take the measurements and then we went out and got our supplies. We picked up two packages, these 22 inch drawer pulls. Now, obviously measure your cabinet to see what size you need, but for us, that worked out perfectly. And then we also picked up a couple pieces of just plain old plywood. We didn't want to do anything super fancy, but we wanted it to still be thick enough and durable enough for it to be a functioning drawer. Now, obviously if your cabinet already has really good shelves in it, just use those shelves and cut them down to whatever size you need. But for us, we needed to pick up some extra pieces of wood. Put the totals here on the screen so you can see exactly how this adds up for us. But as you can see, you can do this project on a super tight budget. Now I know that you can go out there and buy pull out drawer systems, but honestly, they were just too expensive for us and I just wanted to customize this for our needs. The little hack that Jared shared in order to have crisp, clean lines and the wood not fraying at the ends, we actually went ahead and took some painter's tape and just followed the cutting line that we needed to. So that way, as you're cutting, one, you can better see where you need to cut because you can just follow that blue line. But then two, it's gonna just help keep a crisp, clean line. Jared was a huge help in making this project happen. In our cabinet, and this is something you're gonna wanna think about for yours as well, our cabinet for the drawer to be able to open, we actually needed to put some spacers on either side of the cabinet because there's a little bit of a lip inside the cabinet door. We just pulled from some scrap pieces of wood that we had on hand. Jared cut those down to size and I really like how he angled them at the end so that way when you're going into the cupboard, you're not gonna be hitting your knuckles on those sharp edges or anything. It's a nice flush mount. We had the boards cut down to size, it was time to start installing. Now obviously follow the directions that come with your bracket system. But for us, the main thing was just to make sure that the measurements were correct so that way the wood piece fit into the track perfectly and it had a nice even glide. Now since we didn't do super fancy wood or anything for this, I wanted to go ahead and cover it with contact paper. Now if you saw our kitchen renovation video last year, we actually used contact paper on our counter. It lasted really well, but we had an unfortunate heat accident, so I needed to replace it. And so I just, after a year long using the countertops, I went ahead and bought all new contact paper. And I had a little bit of leftover that I used on these drawers. So I already had that on hand, so I didn't spend any extra money. But if you need to pick up some contact paper, Dollar Tree is a great place to go for that. Now on the back of these drawers, we wanted to add like a little bit of a lip. So that way, if anything were to roll back, I wasn't gonna just completely slide off the ledge. But you'll see everything that I have in here is actually contained into bins. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem at all. I had the wood pieces left over, so I went ahead and added those to the back of the shelves. Now if you're liking this video so far, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And also make sure that you are subscribed so you do not miss any future organizing videos. Now that everything is installed and it fits perfectly, it's time for the fun part of organizing. Now you know I went to the Dollar Tree and picked up a couple of their new bins that I saw, which honestly the Dollar Tree is a great place to go for any type of organizing containers. But I specifically liked these sizes because has the almost like file folding size fits my daughter's cups perfectly. Now a little trick for you in order to keep these containers in place 
is to put some poster putty on the bottom of the containers. Using poster putty, I have it in my drawers on the bottom of all of my silverware containers, but it really helps just to keep it stuck in place so that way as you're opening and closing the drawer, it's not gonna slide around. So I did ask Elliot what she preferred because after all, this is her cabinet and she wanted all of her plates and cups and stuff on the top shelf, which I think is a great solution. One thing that we were not storing in this cabinet before which I'm glad that we now have the space to store is all of her lunchbox containers. Now this year we're still doing school from home, but next year hopefully we'll be able to go back to school and then she'll be able to actually pick out her lunchbox container and we can pack our lunches together. On the top shelf we have all of her cups, water bottles, plates, bowls, and the kids' silverware and straws. The bottom shelf I went ahead and created that as more of a snack zone, but plus a future baby spot. Now, I don't know exactly if we're going to be needing bottles or anything like that. As our needs change, what I really like about the system is that we can easily switch around the bins because they're not permanent in place. I just pull up the poster putty and we've got a little bit of extra room that we can grow into it. But I like to keep all my daughter's snacks that she can easily access in this cabinet so that way she can gain some independence. Now for right now, we do not have drawer handles. I do have one that I'm planning on adding at least to the bottom shelf, but I need to go to the store and get some screws for it. But I'm absolutely in love with how this turned out. We're able to get custom pull out drawers all on a super tight budget and make this kid zone really function well. It's going to continue to grow with us as our family grows and it's really gonna offer my daughter some independence with being able to get to her stuff on her own. We are utilizing every square inch of this shelf because we can actually pull out the whole drawer and get to the things that are in the back shelf. Whereas before, I did not keep stuff in the back, or if I did, it was like my refill snack station, and it was pretty much just dead space in the back because Ellie could not reach that stuff back there. So now she can easily access everything she needs to get to here. She can get out her own plate and stuff for dinner. At snack time, help herself. Now, if you're looking for more ideas on how to revamp your kitchen or get it reorganized, make sure to check out the playlist on your screen right now to get some more great ideas on how you can get your kitchen lifted into shape. We'll see you in the next one.